Hello and welcome to this episode of our series on backend development with Flask and Docker. And um, I wish to thank everybody for your support and um, the emails I have received already. I've got a lot of comments from you guys and um, good suggestions about how I can improve and um, some funny comments as well. So the most funniest comment I've heard so far is people are saying um, I like using the word basically too many times in my video. So I guess um, henceforth I'm going to take note and I will use the word basically only when it is absolutely necessary to use. But I hope you guys are enjoying the series so far and I hope you, you love what you've learned so far. So... Um, the focus today is to show you how to use version control with virtual environment. And um, like I said in the beginning, I'm expecting that you know how to use Git and GitHub. You don't have to be an advanced user of Git and GitHub, but at least you need to know what Git is for, how to initialize a Git repository, how to clone, how to pull and how to push i mean the four basic commands of git that gets you up and running quickly and this is this is not a reason for you to quit watching the videos if you do not know how to use git you can continue watching the videos and everything is going to be fine but if you know how to use git already then i'm just going to show you how to use Git and virtual environment. Now, the question is, from yesterday, let me go to my terminal. So this is where we left off in the last video. And as you can see, we have our ENV folder and then our Python application sitting, um, our Python file sitting alongside it. So I just opened the folder. We have this ENV here. Now, the question is, if you are tracking changes to your source code using git or any other source code management solution do you have to check in do you have to track this env folder or not and the answer is a big no there is no reason for you to track changes to the env folder the reason is that anybody that has python installed on their system will be able to generate a virtual environment just as we did in the last video and they will be able to use it so there's no need for you to push your virtual environment folder to github or gitlab or bitbucket any any other source code management solution out there that you are using so you know how to ignore things in um, your project for instance i said earlier that it is not necessary for you to track changes to the env folder and one way of doing that is to add a .git ignore file to your project and to do that i i actually have this site where i go so i just go to google and i do .git ignore and i'll say um, python so there is um a repo on github that actually has git ignore files for different languages and different technologies so basically they list all the possible folders and files that you need to ignore depending on the programming language that you are using so i search for dot git ignore for python and um, these are some of the recommended files and folders that you have to ignore so what I do is I just click on raw and then I copy the content of that git ignore. Then inside my terminal I do catch dot git ignore. Once I do this, I can open this folder in Visual Studio Code and oops, I opened it twice. Let me close this one. And so I would open the git ignore file and i will just paste what i copied online and what i do is i go through to see if they are ignoring any folder that has the same name as the name i gave to my virtual environment and over here luckily for me 
and also because it is a convention in the Python community, you can see that env is being ignored. And if I called it venv, it's also ignored. Sorry. So, so um, other people choose to call it .env so that it is hidden in their project. It's also fine. But I mean, I called my env and the git ignore file is already ignoring it for me. So all you have to do is to save this git ignore file. And when you push changes from this repo to GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, what is going to happen is that your env folder is not going to be pushed so if another programmer checks out or clones your repository all they have to do is to create their own virtual environment using the python minus mv and v and specifying the name that they want to give to their virtual environment and basically that is it ah i just said basically good so <laughs> so they will be able to create a virtual environment on their own and then there's no need for you to push that up onto github so this is one thing that i want you to know about using virtual environment with um, source code management solutions and um, the last thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to initialize a gate repo i'm going to let git start tracking this folder and all i did was to type git in it and then all git is going to do is to add some let me ls minus al and you can see that git has created a, a hidden folder called dot git and that is an internal folder that git uses to track changes to your files and all the cool stuff that git does so i mean this is nothing specific to um, flask it is just me showing you how to use virtual environment with source code management solutions and the basic idea i want you to take out of this session is that do not track your virtual environment do not push it onto your github repositories gitlab bitbucket of whichever one you are using so thank you for watching and um, i'll see you in the next video